Okay, the recording is in progress, and uh, we're, oh, there we are. I think we're out on Facebook as well. Okay, good. All right, hello, everybody. This is kind of the second uh, kind of New Year's that we've done uh, in a row, because we did uh, New Year's Eve, okay? And then we did... Uh, <clears throat> We did uh, New Year's Eve, and then uh, we did uh, today, which is New Year's Day observed. Okay, so it's observed. All right. Anyway, we got some people waiting to talk to us here, and uh, these are some really nice people too. They're amazing, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna join them here. Hold on a second. Let me just admit all. That's what I want to do, and let me get rid of that for the moment. And oh boy. Quite a few people here. Uh, we got, um, what do you know, we, Rachel, she's come and joining us. Uh, let's see here, Marjorie, of course. Uh, and let me see. Uh, uh, there's Lynn LaFrisco, Paula Levin, who is our friend out in uh, Ohio. And uh, here we go. There's uh, Buddy Love, ladies and hey! gentlemen. Hey! And Rachel, this is our little Monday get together. These are all the nice people. <laughs> all the nice people. Yeah, here oh, it comes. God. Let me see here. Uh, and we bring in Rick Sheckman, too. My old pal, yeah. Shecky. Uh, boy, it's uh, it, for, for, for a New Year's Day observed, it's a pretty good turnout, you know? Good turnout. You it's look a, all about it for me. Shecky, you look all bundled up. What are you talking about? What are you wearing? <laughs> you wearing <laughs> I've got a sweater on. Uh, well, oh, dare you. That's, that, <laughs> uh, that is considered bundled. Yeah. Okay, I'm bundled up. <laughs> <laughs> Get my tea. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm bundled up. This Marjorie loves getting me these things. Oh, look at that! Is that lined with fleece? This one fleece. is lined. What is this lined with, Marjorie? That one's fleece, but the other one is lined like with wool. Yeah, she got me one with it's wool to keep yeah. you warm. You know, mm -hmm. what, you know what plaid that is, Alex? I I don't know. We're wearing a carton. Uh, you know, it's a plaid. It's a plaid. Yeah, it is. It's a Stuart plaid, Lottie. It's a plaid. The Stuart plaid. Okay. Indeed, it's great. I don't. I don't wait, 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 is she under her table here? What is that? <laughs> oh, I was trying to wonder what. <laughs> Hello, Mandy. How are you, Mandy? <laughs> <laughs> can you hear Let's us Mandy? it's under her it's under her kitchen cabinet the upper cabinet shut up i was still connected to the bluetooth in my car sorry so oh, i see okay uh, All Mandy, aren't you supposed to say it shut up <laughs> no, i was so rude andrew deutsch is here uh, uh mike chisholm is here he's up in canada Charlie Wallace down in Texas, deep in the heart of um, Marjorie Miller's in the other room. <laughs> Edward Berger. Hi, Edward. That, that's right. <laughs> that's, his, that's his voice. In case people have never heard him before on this show, that's his voice. That's right. That's right. Len the Frisco is here. <laughs> Sorry you couldn't hear me the other night when I was out, but a lot of times when people do stuff from like out, you know, the the the, the uh, signal isn't that great. Yeah, I just wanted to wish you Happy New Year. That was awesome. <laughs> well, it was very nice of you. That's what it was intended to do. Rachel was with us, but Buddy was 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 working. I was working <laughs> last night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two nights, no, two ago. nights, two two nights, nights ago. ago. Yeah. Uh, of, all, of all places, Santa Rosa, the trio, the power trio, Marky, Mikey, and I. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, we had you know a little uh, gathering. I'd say maybe eighty people sat us down, fed us a great meal. 
we, it was what, a he said it was a kind of like a polo club yeah it's like these these ranchers up in santa rosa but here's the club. thing here's the thing uh, rachel was saying to me that and i i explained this to marjorie that if she had lived with me at that time new year's is an evening we all work yeah oh yeah you know it's the big money making night exactly and either we go and and dress up and and we dance by ourselves on the yeah, dance floor exactly that's, that's, or yeah. we stay home cook a good meal hang out smoke weed don't have to drive don't have to get <laughs> yeah. killed but 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 a, a showbiz wife stays yeah. home on new year's or if she goes with her husband she can't dance with him she, because the, he's playing in the band that's people are dancing to exactly it's a, she, uh, rachel said the other night though that the gig you were playing you were going to get home at 10 30. <laughs> they were going new york time five yeah. nine we played cocktails for an hour and about yeah hour 15. they sat us down with the the group yeah uh, and and we dined with the, the people hour and 15 and then we played an hour and 15 we packed up at 9 p.m. West Coast time. No. Wow. All drop with you guys back in New York. <laughs> we were done. We were. I was home and gave Rachel a, a, a midnight, you know, New Year's smooch uh, before the New Year rang in here in California. Yeah, but I mean, so um, were these like all old people who just wanted to get to bed early? <laughs> no, no, no. It was an interesting mix of people. These are all people that ride horses. You know, it's like a riding club, but the big focus is polo. They play polo with other, you know, California. Equestrians. Yeah, they're equestrian, you know, yeah. polo. Yeah, they ride on Pelopenes. <laughs> in, in, Menlo, in Menlo Park, there's the Menlo Circus Club. They have a team and they'll go and play different teams. And there's a women's team and a men's team, so there are it, 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 young it, it, players and old it, players. Well, the, the thing about the thing about polo, Marjorie and I saw a polo match up in Burlington, Vermont. Yes, right. A bunch of people got together and they have a polo match. They have to have like six, they have to own six horses or something at like least, that because they got to keep changing horses throughout okay. the entire match. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When they, that's when a they very the expensive sport. Yes. Sure yes. You yeah. know how when they play water polo, they keep the horses from drowning. That's uh, good. <laughs> well, let me just say, you know how we make, we always make great dough on on uh, New Year's. We made really good dough, and then they tipped us on top of that really great dough. It was like, are you kidding me? What what a wonderful group of people! I, I'll tell you though about tipping, Marjorie. Um, today our cleaning woman came to clean i don't know why she came on new year's day but she could she observe, observe. observe that's why yeah so anyway so so she um uh she brought some, she brought a gift for marjorie and i she was very nice and marjorie says oh, i didn't get you a gift and i'm thinking to myself i pull her over into a corner finally and i say you did you gave her a 300 dollar tip this year yeah, that's yeah. a gift. That's, that's her a gift. gift. Yeah, that's a great gift. You're absolutely right. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. Yeah, the, I gift, know. the gift of cash. What were you going to say, Charlie? I said, I'll take that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's very generous and nice. Yeah. Well, I give I, I give my super 300. Yeah. They get it. Yeah. Each of his assistants, there are three of them, uh, 50 bucks each. Does that right. sound right? That's yeah. good. Yeah. 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 We gave our newspaper guy. 75 this year because he newspaper? always puts he always puts it inside the gate rain or shine like yeah. he gets out of his car oh, well ours ours leaves yeah. it up in the bronx somewhere <laughs> <laughs> like i don't it's yeah. like which came first the chicken or the egg what yeah. came first the tip or the inside the gate yeah yeah, yeah. You know? well, we we're lucky if it gets inside the gate right marjorie <laughs> <laughs> So and, they, anyway. and then they don't they used to with newspapers like when I was a kid delivering newspapers and it was raining what did we do with the newspapers we put them in they these put it plastic, in the plastic, plastic bags put it, and double yeah. plastic yeah, yeah they don't do that they don't do that you know, by the time they we on a mini day by the time we get the world news it's wow. paper mache plus <laughs> the fact they do it in in a letter order so we're always at the bottom so the paper gets soaking wet 
Are we no. talking to are we talking to two of the four people that get newspapers in the entire country? No. <laughs> Here's the thing. Mar Mar Marjorie wants the Sunday paper to the look weekend. at like this. Jackie, Jackie, you get do you probably get the newspaper every day, right? Yeah, but I get it on the computer. Ah, you see, Hi. even Shecky, who for years loved to open up the newspaper, right? Yeah. Now he uses the computer. Yeah, but you're paying the daily mm. news for a year is $24.99. The New York Post is $99. Do you know it's $2 a day if you buy the yeah. paper version? It's like a yeah. thousand yeah. bucks a year to get a damn paper. Yeah. Well, yeah. what we do is we subscribe to the uh, the uh, online version which she uses and then we do the weekend so the combination of the two is like 50 bucks a month and the weekend but it would be 35 bucks a month for just the the digital edition 35 a month that's a lot still anyway yeah, yeah but that's the digital edition of the new york times Jeez. Yeah. Well, how, how do you do the, the crossword puzzle well, you, uh, I, you uh, I need a major, to, major thing. I, yes, well, I, like to, uh, I like to look at the actual page. I actually, it. I will answer that Turn question, you, Paula. I get the, I get the uh, um, crossword puzzle every day here. You, can do, that, you yeah. can do everything online, but there's something I nice. Know, about but good old fashioned oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure the crossword puzzle is called Wordle now. Okay, now that's the what is no, that? No, is that no, wait, no. wait a minute, is is that the New Year edition? Is this today? Uh, that no, it's well today's the second, so you know for, mm -hmm. for, for good. Okay, how many pages are in there? Not many. The oh, the chronicle is pathetic. And they're still spread. charging you like they charged you for the uh, thirty-two forty-page version, oh. right? Uh. I don't know what he pays for it, but yeah. half of it is sports. But yeah. no, Paula, <laughs> you, quarter you of actually, it is sports I subscribe news. every year to the uh, New York uh, the New York Times crossword, and right. uh, you do it on the computer. It's, yes, it, uh, I know. I've done it on the computer, and I don't like it. That, and this is this is like you take this along with you. I, I know you could do that too. Yeah. But. and I do it when I fall asleep, and I don't want to be on a screen when I'm falling asleep. <laughs> and, and honestly, I'm on screens all day long at work. Ex I don't like screens. Exactly. When I'm exactly. I'd rather exactly. have a book. Yeah. 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 Well, I please contribute to the conversation and ask Shecky a question at the same time. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, okay, so one of the reasons why people would obviously buy the newspaper is to get uh, the dailies and things like that. Hey, Shecky, I got this off the shelf the other day and I thought of uh, you and I'm going to send oh, it no, to you. I you don't do have, have it. it. Do you have it in digital or do you have it like the actual? No, I have it as a book. All right, cool. Then I won't send it to you. I'll save the postage. All right. Still, thank you. Silly person to think Shecky so, didn't have that. These are the old <laughs> Superman, uh, Superman comics from the newspapers from back in the day. That's 1939 through 40. Yeah. I don't think Superman's been in the comics or in the newspaper for a long time, but uh, anyway. No. Thank That's you. Yeah. I should, I seem to remember him. Do I remember him in the newspaper when I was a kid? I don't think so. Oh. I don't well, know. it was always in one of the lesser syndicates. Oh, really? So would it be in the Chronicle or whatever? You know, it would be one of the other papers you didn't read. Well, the the Examiner was Hearst, and Hearst. Oh, McClure. It was in the McClure syndicate. Oh, so okay. Where those well, well, you see, I mean, the thing is that the uh, the Examiner here in San Francisco was Hearst, and Hearst had King Features, if I remember correctly. Right. So he's running Nancy and Steve Canyon and Ali Oop and Dick Tracy. And well, actually, those wound up in the Chronicle. The, yeah. I don't think but those are Hearst strips. They, Dick Tracy was hurt, Hearst? Oh, yeah. Really? As in like William Randolph Hearst? The very same. Oh, the very right. same, yeah. Now, it, so Hearst had the examiner? Yeah. Okay. So on the weekend when the comics come out, it's the Chronicle and Examiner. It's the same. They they merge. Yeah. On well, no, the Examiner is pretty much a giveaway newspaper now. The Hearst family bought the Chronicle 
from my uh, from the Tobin family. Yeah, from the okay. Tobin, well, the the De Young. Let's be yeah. you know the De Young family owned the Chronicle, and uh, uh, you know with that KRON TV went kapui. Uh, mm -hmm. So all that happened. So in other words, her family owns the Chronicle. The Chronicle. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Well, again, would you buy the New York Post for two dollars a day? Come on. No, I wouldn't buy the Post for fifteen cents a day. Come on. <laughs> okay, but even back in the Dolly Shift days, when it was a liberal paper. Yeah. You know, then it was a quarter. Okay, that's. I would read that, you know, but two dollars. Like reading People magazine, it's like a, it's sort of just like fluff. yeah, fluff. I've ne but I've never heard of these people. Mm. <laughs> you read page six, and it's a bunch of names, and if you look at them, you've never heard of them. Do you want to really feel out of it? Watch TMZ sometime and see if you can identify any of the people. <laughs> yeah, oh, forget it, TMZ. <laughs> no. You're right. Well, I mean, we watch it, so we get to know who some of these people are. But, I mean... It, it, and who cares? Well, you know what the problem is? <laughs> there used to be a time when being famous meant something. Right. And... and the, well, it, now you have a PR agent who's putting your name in the post, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you always had PR people doing stuff. Yeah, but you had it for the studios. And they yeah. were actually actors and actresses. Yeah. You know, fame today is measured in um, how many followers you have. Yeah, yeah. Lot of likes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, likes. Well, speaking of that, Marjorie and I did one of our little five minute shows out in the park. You know, how many did you get? So far, we're almost approaching a thousand. And you had said you wanted to get a thousand. And we I did it yesterday at this time. That's wow. Pretty, that's pretty good. And I'm thinking, what, what, am I, what am I wasting my time for? I can just go up to the park with Marjorie. She can yell a few nas nasty things at me, and we get a thousand people. Thanks for making, <laughs> making us feel special. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then put out a cup for tips. Yeah. I noticed, Len, you watch it. You watch it, don't you, when we do those little park? I, I watched it. Yeah. And I think Shecky's watched them, haven't you? No, I've never yeah. seen one. Yeah. How about you, Mandy? Have you watched any of them? The stage stuff is always great. <laughs> She's trying to turn on her her Zoom. Uh, my favorite is is when the, there's going to be a big reveal at the end, mm -hmm. and they're doing the the cards, and and the the boyfriend supposedly doesn't know that the wife that he's about to marry is is a cheater and. and <laughs> The cards keep going by. And now my best friend who's standing right next to me is and then the next card. Those, <laughs> those are like a sucker's game right there. Well, anyway. Yeah, they're, not, uh, they're not put on at all. Anybody else watch them? Andrew, I, you I was going to watch it yesterday, I have, but I haven't gotten a chance yet. I did I see have, it. I was yeah. somewhere. I, could watch I don't it. understand why we get so many views on that. Because y'all are adorable. Love you. Yeah, part of it. Part of it is New York. There's we decided. New York. We decided at one point we wanted to really turn people off, and we agreed that we would kiss each other during every episode. <laughs> Maybe not, it's Marjorie. And, and not just kiss, tongue kiss. Oh. I was going to say yeah. when there's. I was going to say when there's no snappy kisses. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. It's also because you go live. So people will see that, you know, you have like 5,000 friends, right? Yeah. So you go live, people are just going to click on it a yeah, lot but, more but, than, you know, something scheduled. But it's you not know, they'll that. Because yeah, totally. it pops up, at least on mine, I get a notification. It'll say so-and-so is live. And you click yeah. on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's fine. That's but it isn't that the numbers are that great in the very beginning. It's over the period of the next 24 hours that they, they get up there. And I, I can't figure it out. You know. It's, it's we want to consume something that's three or four minutes long, and that's it. Our attention span. Right. Right. <laughs> so, in other words, if I start doing a five-minute show every night, I'll get more viewers than if <laughs> absolutely. I did. Yeah. yeah when, How about if I did a one-minute show? Would I then like be the number one show on YouTube? In most Alex, most podcast TV. productions that 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 are lengthy, twenty minutes to an hour, uh -huh. by cutting little nuggets out of it and posting those as reels and small. 
Those yeah. get far more views than the podcast itself. I know. I notice that's what things like uh, the Jimmy Kimmel show does. He yeah. will just do his uh, his monologue, or he will then oh, do a less. thing he does with kids or something like that. And just he'll they'll post the whole show somewhere, but then uh, they post these little nuggets as well. Yeah. Maybe that's the answer. That is if the you answer. Look at, yeah. If you look at like like when Norm Macdonald before he passed away, he had his show, mm-hmm. and he would put one little joke into a two minute clip. And you're at your desk, you click on it, you watch something funny, you move on. Those get right. thousands yeah. more yeah. views than the whole comedy piece. Yeah. Here comes Charlene S., ladies and gentlemen. Right. Wow. You know, you get a couple more people and we'll beat our all-time record. <laughs> Wait a minute. Then she disappeared. What happened? She scared her up. No. Andrew's right, What's though. the all-time I've... record? Hmm? 16, I think. What? Yeah. F- 15 I is think... an all-time record? I think 16. When you had all, you had four rows, all four filled. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's gone to two pages before at one point. Oh um, yeah. At least at, okay. least at least once for a few minutes, kind of a thing. Here we go. Oh, Here many comes times, Charlie. many times. Early in the show or late in the show. Well, but anyway, listen, I want I want to thank Early Vernon. I, I want to thank Vernon for something. Um, he sent me a birthday greeting. And I, I had to watch it any number of times to figure out how they did it. <laughs> And tell them what it was, Vernon. Tell them essentially what the birthday, you know, the video card was. Well, you, can, you can probably pull it up and share it with everybody. Well, I can't do it. It was, it, was a, it was a video birthday card with Weird Al Yankovic yeah. singing happy birthday to Alex. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. He says, Alex, there's something I've been wanting to tell you about for a long, long time, but you know, <laughs> I, I finally I've, I've, I've got to, I've got to tell you. Then he hits the a pitch bike and the barbershop quartet stands up and they all sing happy birthday to Alex. And then at the very end, happy birthday to you. And then the screen opens up and you got all these dancing people behind him and everything. <laughs> going crazy and at the very end there's a birthday cake and it says happy birthday alex and he blows the little uh, party Ow. party uh, great right. now how do you think they did that i figured it out they they, they record a series of videos is what they, he, do. they have you saying. you if alex wasn't there you wouldn't if alex wasn't there you wouldn't have been able to do it but you have a choice i i tried it just as a joke to see how it would look if i said marjorie and he sings Marjorie, but you they you have a list of names, and he probably yeah. had to record those little chunks a hundred exactly. times. Yeah. Yep. So he must have gotten paid yeah. some big bucks for that. Well, I tried it out first. My son's birthday was last month on November twenty sixth, and I knew that he was he was feeling kind of you know down in the dumps, and I sent him Weird Al Yankovic singing happy birthday to him and his girlfriend said it he watched it several times it just really cheered yeah him. it's really it's terrific it's really terrific and uh i i i, w- I wanted to uh, tried to write you but i didn't have an address for you uh but i wanted to thank you for that because it was really amazing i mean you're sitting there and uh, this thing oh, is going I, something i wanted to tell you alex and you're going how they how they do this but then you start looking for the cuts and and the cuts are these, you know, he, they're about three different drop-ins he had to do for everybody. Yep. And uh, they're about how many different names there? Oh, there's dozens of names, but not only that, you have different age groups that you pick. Oh. Right? Oh, in the, yeah. In the, second, in the second song, it says, we hear you're 80-something years old. Wow. <laughs> for my son, it was 40-something. Yeah, so they had to do the cut for 40 something years old as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really amazing. Just amazing. What Weird Al brings a special they, kind of joy. They, yes. It's called mm-hmm. bluemountain.com. If you guys want to check it out, go to bluemountain.com. Yeah. And yeah. how much how much does it cost you? If you sign up for a year, it's $1.99 a month. Oh, well, I don't have that many friends. <laughs> <laughs> you sign up for one month for $6.99. You know, I mean, I got I got Marjorie. I get someone to Marjorie, and I they don't have one for Shecky, <laughs> <laughs> but I could probably have Richard. And for Richard, another thing is there's this 
I think you know there's this app or this company called Cameo where you can yeah. pay and get many different celebrities are on there and at different price ranges. That's and it's right. pretty funny to see who's on there. And they'll make like a personalized message. Like I sent my cousin, Josh is a celebrity. So he was doing it for charity. So I did a private message to my mom from him, oh, nice. you know, and, and like, if you want to give to charity anyway, a lot of these celebrities are doing it for charity and it's fun. Like you, it could be like your childhood dream come true. Like you could send a message to yourself. Yeah. How much of one from Buddy Loves? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but nobody wanted that one. So. There's, some, like, there's some very like cool people there. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, but and some works. very uncool people there. Yeah, yeah. Giuliani was. I got Giuliani say. for one. Yeah. yeah. I got I got the exact um, greeting from my um, my in laws. My mother and father in law sent it for my birthday, and it went to my junk mail. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I had to go find it, and I finally found it and turned it on, and it was. Like you say, it was very clever, but I played it two or three times and I saw exactly where he was dropping. Exactly where they did the cuts, yeah. yeah. But still, it's, really, it's, it's really the first minute you see it and he goes, hi, Alex, I'm something I'm wanting to tell you. And you go, what? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Alex, have you ever had Weird Al in your studio? No. There's an instant hook that they get you. Instant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. but I thought I, initially I thought it was done by some kind of AI uh, thing, but I it isn't. No, it, it, I looked for it to be AI and it wasn't. You know? That's the next. Oh, that's the next that's step. The though. producer. The next step is like uh, like you look at Bruce Willis. He signed his uh, his voiceover because uh, he can't he can't talk anymore. And uh, a commercial just came out, I believe, in Japan with Bruce Willis's voice because he signed his voiceover and they used AI to uh, do the voiceover for the commercial. Well, they're, do, they're doing AI. It's interesting what they're doing. Uh, there's a new Indiana Jones movie coming out this summer. And there are versions of uh, Harrison Ford at various ages throughout the picture. And they did it using AI. They can now literally recreate a human being. Yeah, deep fake is crazy. Like holograms too. Huh? <laughs> They, they weren't they doing like a ABBA concert, all hologram. Yeah, but uh, that that's a different kind of thing. So this is actually creating an actual human being on film. On film, yeah, yeah. and and it's getting so good. Marjorie was I was I played this game called The Last of Us, and uh, Marjorie came in and looked one day. She said, "Those look like real people," you know. I couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, I mean, we're getting to a point where we could do a new, bo another Bogart movie with Bogart. <laughs> and what a con that, well, that's a good concept. Yeah, well, I mean, it, if I get his his uh, estate to agree. First of all, though, uh, you know, Shecky <laughs> likes to bring up something to me, and it's not worth. It's really worth bringing up, and that is every now and then I'll mention to him somebody, and she says. Nobody remembers them. And I'm saying, but it's Bogart. It's, um, and basically, you're saying that people just today, kids today, don't know much about Humphrey Bogart, right? They don't know anything. No. Yeah, they don't know. But, do you they never heard of Casablanca or Maltese Falcon or Key Largo or whatever. And Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, do they know Marilyn Monroe? No. Yes. Crime. Well, you know, they know the they they recognize the image. Mandy said yes. That. Is that from personal experience of, of a younger person knowing Marilyn Monroe? I think so. I mean, I, I just think she's so iconic. She's on so many things like in pop culture that people know who she is. And, and they, they can imagine like she was wearing her dress, you know. I mean, <laughs> they know Kardashian, they know Kardashian but they don't know Monroe. So my 14 and 16 year old don't know. They just left, but I would ask. I them. think the amazing part, bit bigger than any AI or anything, is how they got her into that dress. Yeah. With yeah. that ass? I mean, how broke. she broke. She well, broke. Well, Marilyn, I had to get that ass. She broke the zipper on that dress and a lot of the sequins. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that really? was from a museum. Yeah, that's shameful. Well, that's the one. That's the one she wore in uh, 
Which one was that? Was that the one she wore in Seven Year Itch? And happy no, birthday, she... Mr. President. Yeah. Right. Oh, happy birthday, right. Mr. Oh, it was the JFK thing. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. And then Kim Kardashian wore it and ripped it apart. Yeah, yeah. She broke the zipper. Well, I hate to say this, but all she'd have to do is fart, and she would do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, Alex, you're comparing you're comparing people knowing Marilyn Monroe in a country where kids can't spot their own state on the map. Yeah. yeah. So they when when given that as a as a test, something like seventy percent of kids in America couldn't point to their own state on a map. Well, you know, you know what state. always bothered me, and I'm sure. It's bothered Shecky. I mean, Shecky, more than anybody I know, knows what went on before he was born. Is that okay. a good assessment of you? I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, he knows movies and and all kinds of cultural things. And I was Boy, that same, pathetic. I no, but I <laughs> I was the same way when I was growing up. You know, I knew what went on before I was born. People who were in show. Like, you know, before. here's an example. Who knows who Johnny Carson is? No, it, no that, that's not fair. You're all yeah. Johnny, but ask they are all known. Known. No, but, my kid doesn't, though. Br bring in maybe one of Brian's kids who are like, yeah. what ages are they? 13? No, my 24-year-old doesn't know. Yeah, doesn't know. They just left, so I wouldn't yeah. bring them in. But my seven-year-old won't know that for sure. Right. No. Well, what, do you, what do you say, Mike? Your kid doesn't know who Johnny well, One of the whole reasons I started the Letterman podcast is I'm appalled that my 24-year-old daughter-in-law didn't know who Johnny Carson was. Wow. Like, yeah. It's astounding to me. He was the biggest celebrity in the world, give or take maybe Frank Sinatra or somebody else, but he was the biggest celebrity in the world, and my 24-year-old uh, daughter-in-law didn't know who Johnny Carson was, huh. but was spouting out bits and things that were Johnny Carson- uh rooted yeah. humor yeah and 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 so anyway that was yeah you mean but johnny carson stole from steve allen or some of the sure. other ones sure <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sure and whoever heard of steve allen right oh well of but, course charlene has heard of steve allen i've heard of steve allen everybody here has probably heard of steve yeah. allen okay but i've heard of steve allen because i'm done a big deep dive into things like that. And I have a very similar personality to you, Alex or Shecky in liking things and, and, and the historical value of certain topics, but my contemporaries, most of the people who I, I, I hang out with, they don't know who Steve Allen is. May I, may I say that just for the, for, for the record, that uh, one of the worst guests I ever had on my show was Steve Allen. Really? Oh, he was horrible, but he wrote 10,000 songs. Yeah. Name one. one. Oh, <laughs> this could be the start of something. Hey, start name of something two. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, one of the reasons that kids don't know is that I used to stay up late at night and watch old movies from the 30s and 40s when I was a kid. That's how I knew about Humphrey Bogart and people like that. But you but, did that for an important reason, Charlie. You were curious. No, he yeah. was bored. He was... Nowadays, kids don't even watch movies on TV. I mean, they watch on they watch on their well. They're in black and white. Or... We don't watch black and white. Right, right. Unless it's on purpose. There's too many options now. The the video game stuff, the YouTube, the reels that you guys are talking about. There's too many options. Yeah. They, they, they don't go to a TV and there's old movies on there unless you go on to one of the 200 channels that you have. Yeah. I have to say, my ex-husband used to watch like TCM all the time, and he would, he always had an old movie on it. So at least my younger daughter, she oh. was, ex she was exposed to it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But I mean, the thing is that, that uh, our kids do, we're kind of, we shouldn't act like these kids are stupid. These no. kids, but these kids aren't curious. I think they've lost the sense of curiosity. Yeah. Or they're playing video games all yeah. day, which is more interesting to them. Sure. Yeah, I mean, when you have that that kind of content that's so fast and so live, just like you, Alex, you play those games. Then what you're gonna do? You're gonna sit down in front of a TV and watch a black and white movie for two hours. Right. Well, I'm surprised. Can I tell you what I'm surprised with? Is I, I wound up getting the PS5 basically for one game. It's called mm. Last of Us, and it is a game which is very heavy on storyline. And then you have some action sequences, and then there's more story. I mean, sometimes the, the story part of it will go on for 15 minutes. Yeah, huh. you're a part of the movie. And I'm surprised that show, or that particular game, the first one, I looked it up yesterday, 
Yes. Sold 17 million copies at $59 a pop. Wow. Yeah. I'm surprised because wow. it is so heavy on story. And the main people who buy video games are kids, probably, okay. that they embrace this and that, you know, storyline was important. So maybe there is hope for the future. You know. Yeah, but this this generation. I mean, my son-in-law had to teach how to use a screwdriver and a hammer. They don't. <laughs> they, he didn't know how to use a screwdriver to tighten hinges when they got into a house. Didn't know how to hang a picture. They're and and they they were the last generation that knew how to do stuff. <clears throat> we asked, we're in the trades, and we had auto shop. We had auto shop class, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, classes too. They don't have that. There's no funds for that anymore. Paula, Paula was trying to say something. Paula. Yeah, I was I thought it was interesting that what you said about story, you know, because at least there's a link there between you know, this generation and forever generations, because the st stories go back as far as we, you know, as far as we can know. And so that's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. I had just, to, I had a big a different way of telling a story. We have a movie reviewer that reviews here on uh, GabNet. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he, he referred to Avatar. He was talking about it. And he was saying, and the animation... It's three hours long, I heard. Who wants to the, the animation is terrific. And I what? said to him, I said, it's not an animated film. No. And he goes, what do you mean? Of course it's an animated film. I said, it's okay. a motion capture film in which the actors are acting out their parts. And emphasizing with their face and doing all the things you have to do as an actor. And then it's morphed on to this body. And I said, you have to start, you know, going, uh, going with that, that it's motion capture, because to say that it's animation then dismisses the art of the actor. Totally. Yeah. And he finally, he fi finally had to say he agreed with me. Did yeah. you say it? No. Not yet. Not yet. No, but I look at I look I look at Thanos in the Avengers. Oh, I well, I have a way of watching it without having to go to a movie theater. But I think if I'm going to see it, I want to see it in 3D. You know, I I I just I I know because I've seen, you know, I saw the old Avatar in 3D, and I had a 3D version of it I could run here at home, and I always like to watch it in 3D because it's. Camera, Cameron to begin with is in love with 3D and refuses yeah. to do it in any other way but where it works. You know, I mean, the well, remember when the original you know what I hated? Out. You know what I hated were all these movies that they converted to 3D. 3D. Yes. Mm. You know, I, I just found that. My kids. Huh? In 2010, when I he put the original I Avatar out, he moved the technology forward, the 3D technology. It was set up for that movie and all that. And then you had all these other movies that came out that were like converted, like you're talking about, Alex. And they were substandard when you compare it to the movie. It's to not the 3D. Avatar, which was all you have to do is take a look at a, at a, at a copy of uh, a 3D copy of uh, House of Wax from the 50s. That was shot with two with a with a with two lenses two cameras two pieces of film and and was by um uh was uh optically correct for 3d and a guy who had one eye and uh, yet yeah, andre de toth the director of house of wax had one what? eye and he directed it you remember those andy warhol frankenstein and dracula's in 3ds that were awful they like spike somebody in the liver. Yes, like but they they <laughs> they even they even were shot using the yeah. two lens uh, camera. They're just awful movies, but oh, the yeah, they were horrible, were horrible movies. Yeah. But the, but the point is that uh, uh, so, and and uh, what's his name uh, Cameron uh, was a fan of that kind of three D. He didn't yeah. want three D to just be sloppy. But then when they started taking all these movies and just they do them and then they convert them to 3D. Yep. And I don't even know how they do it, but it just it looks it, it just doesn't look right, you know. And that's what killed 3D the second time around. Yeah. So. But uh, so anyway, uh, so everybody have a nice uh, new year. Did, did you do anything, Paula? Well, my kids were here. They took. Um... 
Southwest Airlines. Uh, wow. From, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they're still there, huh? But they, no, they're not. They, 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 we lucked out. It was pretty uh, hairy, um, scary stuff because uh, uh, of all of the Armageddon around us. But but um, they had a three hour wait, but they made it here. But there were a lot of people that, that were not only, uh, not only stranded, but their their luggage went someplace else. Yeah, my, my kids had their luggage with them, so they didn't have to to, uh, to deal with that. And their ride home was fine. But Southwest Airlines, what the heck? Well, I, yeah. think, I think they've that lost. A scandal. I think they've lost a lot of customers. I think you're going to have to do a lot of goodwill, like give free rides, you know, and a bunch. Yeah, of well, I, as I as I understand it, it was uh, the, the the technology was not up to snuff because they were pleasing their stockholders rather than their customers. Well, it's yeah. always please the stockholder, don't you know that? Because it's front. What? What were you going to say? The person that took over is, is an accounting background. Yeah. And the COO has got an accounting background as well. So all I care about is the bottom line. So all they're doing is being county. Right. Yeah. yeah. And apparently they had no hub. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're not a place, but no hub. Yeah, oh, they're they not a hub and spoke airline. They're more, they just go everywhere. So yeah. well, that's from the old days, isn't it? When they were just a small airline and then they just, you know. Sure, sure. And they never thought you have no hub yet, yet. You have to you have to have contracts with the other airlines to fly your customers. But what happens if you have are, that software? Yeah, so. but what happens if you are a a, a, a what do you call it a, a, a airline that, that has a hub? Yeah, and then that hub is snowed in. Yeah, how do they accommodate for that? With buses well. with buses They're to other airports. Yeah, and, and she's correct. You know, the 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 Southwest is completely separate from the main booking system that all airlines subscribe to. Yeah. So if you go on Google and you look for all the flights mm -hmm. or Expedia, they never have Southwest flights because correct. they don't have access to their fares. So if yeah. you go up to the Southwest counter, they have no option to put you on another airline. Correct. To flight. Oh, Whereas really? If you're on United and United says, hey, you know, we're sorry we overbooked. We found you a flight on Delta. They're they're hooked in through the same booking system. I yeah. thought, I thought, is I, thought every, I thought every airline, you know, was Southwest. No, no. They're, they're like a renegade, I guess. Well, that's going to change now. I would predict. Yeah, yeah if you're if you're looking for a competitive rate, you look at Southwest, and then you look at all the other airlines, and you on two separate screens, and you compare them to determine yeah. if you're going to lower your if you're going to fly Southwest or. Hi, I have that, That's well, basically. Daughter got to come home at Christmas because she was looking at flights and they were all so expensive. And then she, I guess, looked at Southwest and it was like 430. But of course, it got canceled coming home. So I don't know if we're going to get a hot. Well, wait a minute. Didn't you, you asked us, uh, I think last week, wasn't it? About yeah. About her and her going took, to New York. Did she take the train? Yeah. The, the the train, train. How did that work for her? Perfect, right? Uh, it worked. It was fine. It was one hundred and fifty-four dollars, I think, and um, perfect. Got a, perfect. Nothing, yeah. She, she was so funny. I think she was probably just just frazzled because when she was on it, I texted her, "Are you getting on it?" Yes, yes. And she sent me a picture of it, and everybody was just. It looked like an airplane. You know, the seats were just froze. Yeah. And she said, "I would not recommend this to anyone." Oh. <laughs> I said, why? She said, everyone's so mean. Oh. <laughs> She's just a little Southern girl. That's why. Uh, I, I don't know. How can you be mean on a train? I've taken a train and it's the most comfortable ride you'll ever take. She was just probably asking for help, like where, how to do, like, you know, she figured it out. She's 23 years old. You know, she figured it out because she lives in New York now. She's got a tough yeah. skin. Yeah. But, but I said, yes. You're, you'll figure it out. I said, just who cares if they're mean? Just take your AirPods in and just ride. You got Wi Fi, just don't pay attention. Just go. Yeah, she was probably, just probably <laughs> no train. Like I, I guess just tired. It's been a long day. Yeah, think, think but you were it. also dealing with people who probably had their flights canceled. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 If yeah. She, wasn't, year. she wasn't That's traveling at, was a happy, at a happy time of the year. These are all yeah. people who made that train on time. Because they were yeah. trying to find an alternate way to get back to, you know, New York. Yeah, yeah and yeah. none of them were bundled like Rick, so they were uncomfortable. Well, let's say if I wanted to go down and visit <laughs> Mandy in uh, in Georgia or Vernon in Kentucky, 
um, I would uh, I would take the train these days. Why why fly? You know, I mean, yeah. Amtrak but, doesn't run here anymore. Oh well, in that case, I'll have to fly. <laughs> I'm not taking the train. <laughs> no. Why? Because how long is the train from San Francisco to New York? Well, you know, could, that kind of time. It could it be fast. It could be faster. Yes, Everyone. Charlene. Oh, I would say I we took the train from Oakland to Chicago. Wow. And it was we had a, a room that had a bathroom and everything in it. But it nice. um it was it was really fun. The only bad thing about it is that it was running so late. Do you do you know wow. one of my greatest remembrances as a kid was is my mother it took me out to see my grandparents in new york city and what happened is the train went to chicago no train went direct to new york went to chicago no, and you have to change trains in chicago across yeah. town or something so so because where, it's not europe <laughs> well no what happened is what happened what happened was i remember specifically that um uh the um the, the train that we took was a Pullman going out and coming back. And a Pullman was you come back after dinner and hey, all of a sudden, magically, your seat is a bed now, you know, the, the, the double deckers and all of that. And all I remember, and this was the most wonderful moment of my life, practically, was waking up in the morning, raising the, uh, the curtain in the Pullman. And looking out the window, and we're in the middle of the Rockies. Mm. And I just, I looked out the window. I said, this is wonderful. I wake up and I'm, I've am i got this view, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know how that travel is going these days with the Pullmans and so We on. could have that. We could have all of that at, at, at the way Europe does if we committed to it. But, you know, like we're stuck with concrete, with highways. Mm -hmm. You know, Alex, so, several years ago, my folks decided when to take a train all the way out to the West Coast and back. And out of Cleveland, the train is like three in the morning. So I had to, right. that's the time and it goes through Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I dropped them at the rail station. They were all excited. And then I went to pick them up at two, two, three weeks later. They walked up to the car and both of them, the first thing they said was never again. Not wow. hello. So the train rocks, it crackles, people fall out of the sleeper cars because it's so unstable. The rail system needs it's a, terrible. Total re a total yeah. renovation. You go to Asia, you go to these other well, places. You know, the, we are capable, are a lot of these trains, I, I took a train to Boston and it just went blah, 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 blah. And I, I said to a, a, one of the conductors, I said, aren't these trains capable of... of uh, going faster he said this train is capable of going 100 miles an hour he said but there's, no, there's no track that will handle it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so where we have a problem is the infrastructure and not having mm -hmm. a railway system i mean you go to europe zip 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 you go to you go to japan that's Marjor marjorie took a uh a, china a, what a turbo train down to uh, what shanghai was bullet it? train yeah. Oh, I watched that movie Friday. Bullet train. Don't say that. <laughs> but she took the bullet train. And how was that, Marjorie? It was great. It wasn't from it was from Shanghai to um a city way, way far away, um, where I am Pei was born. So we went out to see his museums and stuff like that. And it, it took just a couple hours. Yeah, you just blink your eye and you're there. Your and eye, it's comfortable. There. And it's yeah. comfortable and efficient and does everything it's supposed to in the 21st yeah. century. We're the yeah. only we're one of the few countries in the world now, civilized countries in the world that doesn't have a great rail system. Yes. And isn't, why our friend, never, huh? isn't our friend Elon Musk building tunnels under LA to Las Vegas to build one of these things right now? Yeah, and you can get let's see, it's one mile long now. <laughs> and, and you, you can get there in like three seconds but what the hell you know it's, you're still in la well i looked it up and it's three and a half days with two changes of two changeovers to go from oakland to new york oh That's really three and a half days yeah. so i think i'll fly because it's you i can get there in five hours with no change yeah you can't be in a hurry i know from florida to new york and it was an overnighter and it stopped 
because things happen and and kids come and wave at the train. Yeah. The train. Yeah. It was fun. But you, do can't, it. you can, can do it, it like the like the train ride is your trip. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But if you yeah. really want to go someplace, it's not fast. Well, it's in all your trips, Shecky, in all your trips to Europe, uh, have you ever had a chance to take the trains over there? No. No. Never been on one. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, you know, they're there, but they're terrific. I mean, they're really fast. I mean, they're I'm wonderful. Taking... So you, you have you get a URL pass and, and you, you exactly. know, well, I took them. I, I yeah. was in uh, what was the city? Alberville uh, in the in the French Alps. And uh, I took a train to Paris and it was a bullet train or, you know, it was a fast train. It was going over 100 miles an hour. And I was there in a couple of hours. You know, it was terrific. It was just terrific. Um, did you go first class or second class or third class? You know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, all the classes give you enough leg room and, you know, sometimes you have tables and, uh, you know, so uh, I, it was no big deal for me. Yeah, we took I've never taken one to, um, I'm sorry. Hmm? I'm sorry. Go what? ahead. Who are we talking? Well, who was talking? No. I'm hey, sorry. Marjorie I was just going to say, I took one to Washington, D.C. when I was in the seventh grade from Atlanta. <laughs> I assume that it still does that. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we still have an Amtrak. It's probably the same train. By the way, Marjorie, Marjorie <laughs> how, did your, uh, how did your alma mater do in the Rose Bowl? It starts at five. It starts at five. Are you going to watch it? Of course. Of course. It's... it's uh, she went it's to Penn the State. Rose Bowl, Alex. She went to Penn State. That's right. She's a Penn State girl. Yeah. She went to Penn <laughs> State. Rose I like to call it Rape State. No. <laughs> Stop it. Yuck. Joe Paterno was incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it didn't end too well for him. No, it did not. <laughs> you know, they took down all his statues and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a shame. It, that revisionism, oh, you know. Okay, I you know I, what happened was horrible. You know he didn't do it; somebody else did it. But he turned but he it, covered it up, Alex. He covered it up. Uh, but you know, in spite of that, why take his statue down? It, it, you can't demean what he did. Yeah. Uh, it, it professionally, you know. Yes, Mike. I've been thinking about the statue thing quite a bit lately, and when the current group of people who are in charge or are uh, a part of whatever organization that it is that we're talking about that has a statue there can answer the question with definitive um you know unity do we want this representation of this organization in front of us right now and they all find it distasteful i think that's the time to look at it and i feel like penn state is a very good example of that hmm. But who finds it distasteful? The current, the 50 current people users of... who have, you know. Yeah. yeah. The question, the question with the statue is, what was the purpose of it being put up? The, these fed, Confederate statues were put up during Jim Crow days. Oh yeah, no, the, the, black people yeah, down. Yeah. No, so, that, so that's so then you got to decide: do you want to put a plaque up that says this was put up for that purpose? Okay, you, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying. What I'm saying like this: do you put a plaque up and say, hey? You allow these horrible things to happen, or do you just leave it alone? Yeah, but, but taking it, it down know, doesn't make sense. You no, know, but Joe Baterno is an example. You know, was a was a, a great coach, just yeah. a great coach, and they put up a statue of Penn State because he put that school on the map. Right, and and then all of a sudden these things happen, and you tear the statue down. What mm -hmm. you're tearing down is his legacy, not what how it wound up. You know. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I hear you because I'm a historian guy. I love that stuff. And I believe that, uh, well, we talked about this on New Year's, you know, if we forget history, we'll repeat it. So I think it's very, very important. I, I like what Andrew says about putting the plaque up to, uh, you know, kind of update the story. But at the end of the day, I think you said it. The reason they take the statue down with with him is because it was part of the program that he had the statue up that where the cover up was. That's and right. because it was part of that, it's not like he was into something on the side uh, <laughs> and football was left untarnished. It was part of the football program. So yes, I, I understand how the current people who are a part of that program might not want that representing them. That's where I'm coming from. Right, right. 
you know, uh, but uh, I'm just looking at something here. Uh, let me see here. I want to, I just want to make sure we're on. Okay. I just, uh, I have an idea. They can make an NFT of him. NFT. It's going for ninety nine ninety nine. Explain to me what an NFT exactly is. It's a non fungible. It's a non fungible token. Yeah, you get no fudge with it. It's fudgeless. Yeah. By the way, there's uh the is Mandy? No, Mandy isn't frozen. She's just. Striking. <laughs> she was doing a Madonna pose there. I, I heard the Orange Menace ones are selling now for like a dollar. Ninety percent of their value. Yeah, yeah. Imagine. Yeah, that. but he pocketed the money already. Yeah. Right? So Mandy, most of them himself. Vernon's got his hand up. Yeah. Uh, yes, Vernon. No. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I couldn't see because he has a thing on his hand, a brace, yeah. brace, and so it then it disappeared. <laughs> Hold up the other hand if you need to. I just don't understand no. something that you see on your, your computer screen. Why you a screenshot of it wouldn't be just as valuable to you? Right. Well, yes. Talking about the statues, we we had a controversial statue. I'm not sure why it was so controversial. But we had a statue at the entrance to one of our parks, and it was a statue of General John Castleman. And John Castleman did fight briefly as a major in the Confederate Army, but he also joined the Union Army after the Civil War was over, and he was instrumental in founding <laughs> the Kentucky Saddlebred Horse Association. And the statue was him on his favorite saddlebred horse. He was not in a uniform of any kind. He was in his riding gear on top of Caroline's, his favorite saddlebred horse. And people started uh, uh, throwing orange paint on him because of the fact that he had, had served briefly in the Confederate Army. Yeah. It ended up having to take it down because people were throwing orange paint on it all the time. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And I was really embarrassed as a city that we had those kind of people living here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a lot of morons these days, let's face it. <laughs> yeah. I, I tore yeah. down my Alex Bennett. Uh, <laughs> Bobblehead. Yeah. It was the birds wouldn't go into the bird bath anymore, so I'd take it down. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me just ask Mandy one thing. She, she she was here for the New Year's Eve show, and then she left as soon as her team won. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you I had to go on your show because I was watching the game live. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, did you enjoy the rest of your New Year? Yeah, it was great. Oh, okay, good, good. I just I thought that I didn't know we were doing like a whole long, a whole hour or whatever. Oh, okay. Well, Neither did we? We just liked having you there. You know. Okay, it was fun. I know it was obnoxious as I'll get out. Yeah, yeah. Well, when your team finally won, I couldn't tell whether you were reacting to your team winning or having an orgasm. <laughs> it was a very similar look. It was. Oh, Alex. They even have some video like it's going around the internet how it literally happened at the strip. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, that's right. It like, did, didn't it? Yeah. It was very it was so funny how it happened right at midnight. And you were saying five, four, three. And I was being handed a glass of champagne and like <laughs> he missed it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> on, Facebook, on Facebook, there's a video of it on top of each other. They're showing the yeah. countdown going down. Oh, the really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is uh, there is uh, 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 Brian <laughs> with his ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Adrian. Hello, Adrian. <laughs> Happy New Year, Adrian. <laughs> well, have her answer and try not to move your lips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. Uh, older, she has more attitude. Huh? Yeah. Older, she doesn't want to be on anymore. Are you Are you painting your office there, Brian? <laughs> is she get? She's getting too old for this nonsense, huh? 
Yeah, she used to be fun and cute and be annoying and funny faces, and now she's not. Yeah, um, now she's <laughs> very dignified. Yeah. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> my voice just started going out on me. Uh, uh, hey, listen, everybody, this has been wonderful. Yeah, terrific. I love this. Uh, uh, I have to say that on the uh, New Year's show, we had a lot of the people do this show and a uh, few people who don't and do the other show. And in the towards the end of it, two people got into an argument. Oh, <laughs> you know, and I said, boy, I, this is so different from the way, you know, you just add two people into the mix. <laughs> And it changes the whole nature of it. This is so pleasant. And it's just, it's like uh, Marjorie says, oh, you're going to do a show today? I said, yeah. And she says, uh, and I said, because I don't mind doing it because it's like just doing a Zoom with a bunch of friends. You know, it's really nice. It's really very nice. Great to be with you. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, buddy and Rachel. And come do the show more often, you know. Well, we're going to come in May and we'll be in your studio live. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll come on the show more often, without a doubt. Uh, okay. <laughs> and and uh, thank you, Andrew Deutsch. Thanks to Candace and Mike Chisholm. <laughs> you never see her. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Always good to see you here. Marjorie Miller, I'll see you for dinner. Uh, <laughs> I'll be watching football. Len LaFrisco, thank you. Paul Eleven, thank you. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Buddy Love and uh, Rachel, thank you for joining us. Uh, and Rick Sheckman, uh, thank you so much, as always. Always a pleasure. And uh, Mandy, love seeing you in those, those new digs. You seem to really be enjoying them. Yes, I made sausage balls this whole time while we were talking. You made sausage <laughs> balls. Well, why didn't yeah. you say that earlier? I could have had a good joke for that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Those Italian balls? You like Italian sausage balls? Or, okay. I'm glad Vernon someone Dunn had the balls down in Kentucky. Those. Thank you so right, much. Right, thank right. you so much for the birthday greeting. Brian Neary, thank you for joining us, as always. Uh, and Charlene, nice to see you again. And now here is the fabulous Edward Berger, <laughs> who's going to sign us off by saying, "That's all, folks." Bye, -bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Alex.